Yes, we are live. So welcome everybody. It's Phil from Snow at Ski Courses. What another wonderful day, absolutely glorious day out here in the Alps. Yeah, we're hoping things are going to kick off and we'll be back with our skis on our feet fairly soon. Which brings us to today's topic. We've had a, a lot of webinars and today is a particular favourite webinar of mine. It's called Connecting. Connecting with the Mountain. Anyway, let's get on with that Connecting with the Mountain. So, Connecting the connection point. How did we first get into this? I suppose that's a good place to start. Looking back, I was trained like most ski instructors and coaches. I was trained fairly conventionally. So I was, I was trained to look at people in skiing. But after a number of years, especially when we moved into all mountain skiing, I noticed that a lot of people were doing things very different to how I as a ski instructor was trained to look at people. Now I've told loads and loads of these stories over the past few webinars, webinars, lots of these stories. So please go and have a look at some of the other webinars and have a look. But I was trained to look at people and they defied everything that I was trained to talk about. Um, to talk about, to teach, to watch in their skiing. They ski completely differently to me and against what I had been trained to see and teach but they were amazing skiers absolutely phenomenal now sport is littered with people great sporting people that do it differently to the conventional way and i had a particular or some particular instances which changed completely how i think about skiing and coaching skiing in ski racing we know that people race so totally differently so they've obviously got something in common that we're not seeing so we call this the invisible skill and it's not just in skiing it's in all sports in a minute I'm going to go through some of the sports uh, that w we know about with where the connection point is so vital so first of all what do we mean about the connection point it's the bits of things that touch each other Okay, in any sport, there are surfaces that touch each other, like my two hands here. Okay, we, the bits that touch each other. Normally, there's two, always two things that touch each other. If it's uh, hang gliding, it's the, the canvas or whatever material of the hang glider, and it's the air. If it's water skiing, it's the base of the water ski, whether that's fiberglass or wood, I don't know. Um, although I water ski, I don't know what uh, skis are made of these days, but it's the, the material of the water ski and the water. In skiing, it's the base of the ski and the edges of the skis, depending on the surface of the snow that we're skiing on. This is our connection point. In fact, in skiing, we've got a few connection points. We've actually got four connection points. There's a few four main ones plus a few more which I'm going to talk about so if I get my ski as we know we've got the base of the ski and the edges so we've got two edges and one base so there's three connection points as a, as a starter and I've got two of those so more often than not if I'm skiing on firm snow I've got two edges and the surface of the snow that's my connection point the two edges and the surface of the snow I've also got some other connection points, which I'm pretty fanatic about for anybody that's uh, skied with me, which is this bit here, okay, which is the basket on a ski pole. Okay, this bit here. If you're on firm snow, it's this bit, and you can see there's a little ice grip there at the bottom, and then if we're in deep snow, we've got this basket. For those people that have come on our off-piece courses, you know how fanatical we are about the basket. That is a massive connection point. So that now, every, everybody that gets good in their sport is fanatical about the connection point. Now that often comes at a later stage. They realize how important it is. Now you just need to watch tennis to know about the connection point. They arrive with at Wimbledon with how many rackets? 10 rackets, each one of those rackets with a slightly different um, setting for their, their racket strings. For people like myself that play just recreational tennis, I'm thinking, can they honestly tell the difference between every racket? You bet they can, absolutely. That is the connection point. The, the tennis ball, the string on their tennis racket, the connection point. We've got other We've got other sports with the sporting stars fanatical about the connection point. Okay? Formula One racing. 
the tires and the tarmac. Okay. Absolutely fanatical. Those tires, it's a whole science unto itself. The tires, when do you come in? What tires to use? When do you get your tires changed? How much wear should they have? You can see at the start of a Formula One race, people warming up their tires so they get more grip. The, the great, some of the great drivers that I remember, obviously there was Michael Schumacher. He, he was so connected with the ground. If it rained, he, he was the star in the rain. People may disagree with me, but that's what I remember as a kid. And more recently, Lewis Hamilton. If it rains, he comes it unto his own. They have absolute connection with not only the car, the seat, everything that they touch in the car, that moves on to the tyres and how those tyres connect with uh, the road surface. Zola Budd, if you remember Zola Budd, she was fanatical. She was so fanatical about her connection point with the running track that she wouldn't wear shoes, she wanted to do it in bare feet. Coming on to skiing, skiers, ski racers, once they reach a level, are fanatical about the connection point. We've just been down to um, uh, around to Chamonix to get our boys fitted with their ski boots with Jules. If anybody knows Jules over there, absolutely fantastic. One of the best boot fitters I know. There are many boot fitters around, but the the connection with the mountain. We've got the skis, but we've also got the boot. The boot connects us to the ski. So the boots as important as the ski. It's the connection point. And he was telling stories about. Um, his experience with top racers, um, currently current racers and racers before, how fanatical they are about their boots. For example, Christofferson. How many ski boots do you think Christofferson has? 15 every year. <laughs> 15 sets of ski boots. He, he can feel absolutely everything through every ski boot. A half degree. Here his ski boots will be adjusted to have ski boots with a half a degree difference on the base of the ski or half a degree on the cuff of the ski boot. Um, then we go to another extreme, he was telling us about, who was it, um, ah, Simon, Simoncelli, David Simoncelli, an Italian racer that he worked with. Now Simoncelli had the same pair of inner boots for six seasons. Six seasons. Every season he'd come in to see Jules. Jules would make him another inner boot. He'd go, Jules say, how would you get, get on with that new inner boot that I made for you? He'd go, it was okay, but I went back to my old ones. And this happened for six years on the trot. He wouldn't change his inner boots because he was fanatical about that inner boot. That inner boot was everything to him. Okay, and um, then more recently in skiing, more recently, Michaela Schifrin at the start of this winter, she actually made a public statement to say that she was heading back to the States. I know there was other things going on, but to reconnect with the mountain. Heading back to reconnect with the mountain. She had felt she had lost her connection. She had a couple of races which didn't work that well. So she went back to reconnect with the mountain. Okay. Now, going on to other sports, so we can talk about this connection point. We'll come back to talk about it more in skiing. But many, many coaches in other sports have come across the same thing. So they've had to move away from traditional teaching. Okay? Traditional teaching can be good. Don't get me wrong, all ski instructors are out there doing a great job teaching what they've been trained to teach. Okay? But when you ski down the mountain, when you ski down the mountain, it's your skis that touch the snow. Your skis touch the snow. So that's the important thing. And that's how we had to get into this. We were recognizing that people weren't connecting with the mountain. As a skier myself, I remember going through the Basie system, our British Association of Snow Sports Instructors, and as a young trainer, I always remember one of the most common forms of feedback that we gave to people were develop mileage. You need to go away and get more mileage. And people used to say to me, why? <laughs> And I used to say to them, oh, you need to develop a better feel for your skis. It was a common thing written on people's reports. Go away, get some mileage, get some mileage and develop a feel for your skis. At the time, we just didn't quite know what that meant. We knew that people had to do it. They had to go away and they had to de develop a better feel for their skis. They were, I suppose looking back, we would say they were too robotic. They had learned techniques 
and they were performing techniques okay, but there was something missing in their skiing. And it was this touchy-feely stuff where you're connected with the mountain. Now, in other sports, um, I came across a golf coach. Now, you golfers out there <laughs> will probably shoot me down. I came across a golf coach. In fact, somebody sent this to me. And they sent me a DVD of a golf coach. They said, Phil, you've got to read this. You've got to listen to this. Listen to this guy coaching golf. He's Phil Smith of Golf Coaching. And it's the truth about golf. It's a guy, a guy called A.J. Boner. If you don't know him, if you haven't heard of him, look him up. Absolutely incredible. He talks about the connection point in golf. The moment the club head hits the golf ball. And as he shows so superbly, up until that moment, you could be doing more, more or less anything. Anything. And he goes to show different swings, standing on his front foot, standing on his back foot, hitting with, with one leg only, standing on one leg. And every time he hits that ball, it is a, a perfect shot, okay? It's the moment of contact with the ball, AJ Boner. Now, if you think about it, um, a lot of equipment replaces our own contact points. And I'll give you an example. I use this example a lot. If I give somebody, if I ask, I, I throw a tennis ball to somebody and I just ask them to hit the tennis ball back with their hands, they can more or less hit it straight back to me every time. Back to me, I say, hit a bit higher with their hand, straight back to me. Hit it low, it doesn't matter what age, young child, old child, adults, whatever. More or less everybody can hit that tennis ball straight back to you, straight back to you. You can ask them to hit it with the back of their hand, with the front of their hand. And then you can ask them, okay, that was pretty good. Do you think you could put a bit of top spin on that ball? And more or less, first time people can hit the ball and put some top spin on it with no coaching whatsoever, because that is the connection point. We are used to that, okay? And we're using that to hit the ball. I need no instruction. I can ask them to slice it, top spin, okay, slice it on the right, slice it backhand on the left, more or less anything I want, it comes straight back to me. Now. You stick a tennis racket in their hand, <laughs> believe me, it is completely different because now my hand is not the connection point. This is the connection point. This is the connection point. And then we start talking about technique, movements, how to hit a tennis ball. Of course, everybody can hit a tennis ball. They've just shown me with their hand. But can they hit a tennis ball with a racket? It takes a lot of training. Okay. Now, there are people that specialize in this. This has to become our hand. Strap that to the, your hand, strap that to your hand, and you will be able to hit a tennis ball quite happily. Put your hand there, and it becomes different. So somehow, we've got to make this our hand. This becomes our hand, and all great tennis players have that. That is their hand. Okay. It's the same in other sports. Now, if you take ski racers, you will know how fanatic ski racers are. Okay? They have servicemen, they have boot technicians, because okay? these are the contact points with the mountain. The ski technician is fanatical about the edges and the base of the ski. If you walk in when a ski technician has just prepared a ski and you put your finger on that base, you will be thrown out of that room, absolutely thrown out of that room. The racer is fanatical about their skis. The ski edges, the base of the ski. Yeah. This is what we call, I call it, the invisible skill. Okay, it's not something that you can see. So quite often, this is why it's not so much there in ski teaching, because other things we can see so clearly. We can see arm position, which comes back to, I remember going through my ski instructor exam, I must have had uh, a weird arm carriage, I don't know, but every exam I took, people used to comment on my arm carriage, too wide, too narrow, too high, too low, and I spent forever my time just moving my hands around, trying to get my hands into the right place. And I remember vividly getting to a point and we were doing some training, somebody mentioned something about my arm carriage, and I went, please, <laughs> I have listened to this, my arm carriage, 
for 10 years. Can somebody tell me something which will actually improve my skiing? <laughs> because no matter where my arms were, I didn't actually feel it was improving my skin. So I remember it vividly. Okay. Um, so ski instructors are trained to see movements. They're easy to see. Uh, an extension of the leg. And we actually had a whole webinar on movements. So these are important. Movements are important. But the connection with the mountain is the invisible skill. We know it's invisible. If you watch the ski racing on TV, you will listen to the commentator. You will listen to the commentator. Okay. They can only commentate on things that they see. How often does a commentator say about a ski racer, oh, this is an amazing run, this is how to ski a course, only on the split time to find that that ski racer is half a second down. Or the other way. Okay, lots of mistakes. Oh no, lost so much time. And then the split time, they're half a second up. Sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. It's almost impossible to see the connection point with the mountain. You can sort of get an idea, the snow spraying out, if there's excessive snow spraying out. So that's telling us something. But quite often we cannot see this. So you get skiers that look, ski racers, that look like they're not skiing very fast. They give the impression that they're not skiing very fast. And they, they come down and they're half a second to a second ahead. And then we give, uh, see ski racers give the impression that they're skiing really fast, putting loads of effort into it. Their body's moving all over the place and they come down they're half a second to a second off the pace. Okay? This is the invisible skill, the connection point with the mountain. So let's have a look at why is it difficult to connect? Because that sounds simple, isn't it? You just ski down and you connect with the mountain. You're in tune with the edges and the base of your skis. It sounds easy. We can say, you've just got to connect more. Go away, we, we had it in our ski teaching. Go away, develop more feel. Get some mileage. But it's not easy to do. It's not easy to connect. Why? Why is it not easy to be in tune with the connection point? The main reason is we have distractions. We get distracted. Our dis we, we are distracted away from the bit that's touching the snow. And there are many, many distractions that cause our focus to come away from the connection with the mountain. One I've already mentioned is ski technique. Because ski technique is mostly away from the mountain. Okay, arm position, stance, style, movements. Okay, how you're moving your legs, where your hips are whatever it's all moving our focus away from the connection point now that can all be useful so don't get me wrong here this is absolutely key all that te technique is really useful it can be really useful you got loads of stuff on technique on uh, the other webinars but it pulls us away from the connection point so for us to work with this, understanding that we are skiing mostly in an environment where people really need to be in tune with the mountain, an environment that is constantly changing, off-piste and race courses. That's where most of our work is, ski racing and off-piste, where every time you change direction, the snow texture could be different, the shape of the terrain could be different. So we've really got to get people in tune with the mountain. So I went into this a lot on one of the other webinars. I can't remember which one it was, but it was about explaining the difference between drills and skills and playing the game, okay? Because if you're playing the game and doing a drill and a skill, you won't be connected. You can't be connected. Your focus, even if somebody mentions about here, you know, I'm two and a half foot away one you know one meter away from the connection point so if, if I'm focusing on the movement of my hips I'm not connected with the the mountain at that point it can be a useful exercise it can be useful drill it can be pretty useful when the environment is the same and I don't need to adjust to the mountain okay? but when the environment is changing and I've got to adjust to that mountain the me focusing on technique is pulling me away from the mountain it's pulling me away from the mountain so any slight adjustments that I need to make, I won't be able to make them. So technique is something that pulls us away. So try to bear that in mind if you're working on technique. Technique can be useful, very, very useful, but when you're skiing in an environment that is changing, you've got to become connected to the mountain. You've got to focus on the snow and focus on your ski equipment, on the edges or the bases of your skis. 
and how you are controlling that connection point. Okay? The instructor, the instructor, else we as instructors can pull your focus away from the connection point. Not just in what we're teaching, just being there. <laughs> okay, what happens when I run a lesson? I ski off and say, okay, we're heading down this way. Let's go, everybody. And people are watching where I've gone. Now, we covered this in the webinar Focus. So if you want more info on this, go onto our webinar Focus and have a look. So I ski down. Now, the, the, the customer's focus is not on connecting with the mountain. It's where, where's the ski instructor? Where, am I go where have I gone? following me okay it can be on the other members of the group so it can be on other people other people are distractions and I see this all the time with customers that their their focus is everywhere it's certainly not on their connection point in the mountains and other skiers and often it has to be so again this is a, a big skill that we need to develop please 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 go on to our webinar focus so and have a look at that because yes, we have to be aware of other people around us without a shadow of a doubt. But if your focus is on other people, you're not gonna be connected with the mountain at that point. So we have to get used to what we call attentional switching, okay? In a slalom course, we have to do the same as well. If you're a ski racer, you've get, got to get used to it. I've heard many, many times that people have been told to focus two or three gates ahead. Now, if you're focused two or three gates ahead, you can't be connected with the mountain. It's not possible. You're, th you're three seconds ahead. Okay, you're three seconds ahead. So, but you need to be aware of what's coming up. You need to be aware of what's coming up and you also need to be aware of what you're skiing on at that moment in time, which we're gonna come on to in a minute. Okay, so other people, other obstacles, they all pull our attention away from connecting with the mountain. Okay. Now, here are some key ones. Self-consciousness. Self-consciousness is an absolute key distraction if you're self-conscious about the way that you ski. If you're a racer, it could be worried about the result. You can't connect to the mountain if you're skiing down a race course thinking about the result. Where am I going to come? Am I going to ski fast enough? Your mind is completely elsewhere. It's certainly not with the mountain. It's not with the snow. It's not with the terrain. Okay, so being self-conscious, skiing around, worried about how you ski. Being worried about how you ski is a big distraction. It pulls our focus away from being connected with the mountain. Pain. <laughs> Pain. Okay, some people are very good at blocking this out. Ski racers get very good at blocking out pain. If their boots are painful, they can stand in the start gate and block it out. But if your boots become so painful that you cannot block it out, that is a massive distraction. You end up adapting your skiing to suit your ski boots to try to relieve some of the pain. You can't be connected with the mountain if you've got painful ski boots. It's not possible unless you can block it out. Okay. Fatigue. Fatigue is a big one. If my legs start to feel tired, again, some people are good at blocking that out. Okay, they may get tired, but they're still very, very good at focusing on the connection point with the mountain. But when your focus moves to tired, the tiredness in your legs, it's very unlikely that you'll be well connected with the mountain. So it could be time to stop and have a rest. Okay? Fear. Fear is a big one. If I'm nervous or scared about something, I'm not going to be connected. So we, there's lots of things that we've got to do to overcome fear. You've got to be in the right environment. You've got to have good goal setting. Okay? Don't have ridiculous goals. Of course, if I had a ridiculous goal, if I was about to compete in a World Cup and I wanted to get a top 30 result, <laughs> well, it's not going to happen. I probably wouldn't be scared because I know how ridiculous that goal is. Okay? But even having goals which are slightly unrealistic, we're going to get fear. And fear will take us away from the connection point. So from an all-mountain skiing point of view, you've got to get into goal setting, okay? Which route am I gonna take? Where am I gonna ski? Can I manage that slope there? Can I get down to that bit of snow? Once you've got your goal setting in tune, then you can get in tune with the mountain as well. Unrealistic goal setting will make us nervous, will make us scared, and we won't, our, our, our focus is on what's going around up here rather than what's going on down there. 
okay um, hazards we've spoken about trees other hazards they're all distractions now in another video I think it was the focus video that I produced I remember working on a particular course and uh, I had a different group every day a different group every day and I videoed each group every day and we were in some quite difficult demanding off piece it was a training course and so I had quite a lot of tumbles during the week and as I started to put the end of week video together I started to notice every fall and something stood out on every time someone fell every time moment a moment before they fell they were distracted could have been a tree some snow ahead different type of snow another skier it, it, but nobody fell just for the sake of it nobody nobody was suddenly skiing down well connected with the mountain and fell over not a single person every single person I must have had 20 falls on this video over the course of having a different group every day and the whole week skiing all day 20 falls every single fall there was a reason behind it there was a distraction so that just goes to show you it's very rare that you're just skiing along and you fall over very very rare you've been distracted your focus has been pulled away from the connection point with the mountain so if you're skiing within your ability level then you shouldn't really fall over you shouldn't really not if you're well connected you can adjust you can adjust what you're doing with the mountain so it's the distractions that cause us to become disconnected from the mountain okay um so that's why that we've spoken about the connection what is the connection point in other sports i've got some other stuff here this <laughs> this was a life changer for me believe it and not an absolute life changer it's a touring boot before I was skiing in race boots which were great but as I got older and older and I wasn't racing anymore I was still skiing in race boots can you imagine that the sole of a race boot is slippery it's designed absolutely smooth and I was getting a lot of pain in my legs just walking around and I'm not surprised I was having to walk around in snow which is slippery on a slippery boot so I had extra tension in my legs and then this boot came along <laughs> it's light and it has a Vibram sole the first time and this is going back many many years ago the first time I put these boots on just getting out of the car and walking to the lift was a life change it was life changing I went oh my word the pain in my legs started to go I had less tension because I had purchased with the sole of the ski boot Okay. ski touring we're walking across rocks etc 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 so that was a life changer that shows you how important that was what else I've got people okay now that is a cycling shoe okay with a cleat at the bottom cyclists will be fanatic about this cleat because that's their connection point to the pedal not only they're fanatic about tires tire pressure okay they're also fanatical about because this is a, a connection point as well the your foot and the pedal as well as the tires and the road okay, so cyclists will be fanatical about this um, goalkeepers now I heard that I did a bit of a googling before coming on here today I remember David Seaman in my time I heard that David Seaman would wear a different pair of gloves every single football match because he was fanatic about the connection with the glove and the ball I googled some some goalkeepers like to wear them for two games uh, they, they try to roughen them up a bit before they they use their gloves so they can make the the rub on the glove a bit stickier but I'm absolutely fanatic about that connection point okay. what else have we got climbers chalk chalk on the hands <laughs> connecting with the mountain so how do we connect how do we connect with the mountain well I've gone on about why we can't connect because there's distractions so we have to be able to get rid of distractions we've got to get rid of those distractions so that we can be in total tune with the mountain environment and get our focus right on to the ski to snow contact so if our boots are hurting we've got to sort out our boots okay if our legs are tired we, we've either got to have a rest or we've got to get fitter <laughs> okay if we're working on technical issues we have to understand when ski technique is useful 
to focus on, like in a training session, and when it's not useful to focus on when you're free skiing down a mountain that's constantly changing, like a race course or an off-piece road. Okay? If you're in a race course and you're working on some aspect of technique, the likelihood is you're, you're going to come out of the course, your, your edge is going to skid sideways, you're going to lose time at somewhere in that course. Okay? You've got to connect, you've got to be in tune with the mountain. Which brings us on to focus. So focus is absolutely key for connecting with the mountain. I said this earlier in the webinar, go on to our webinar about focus and learn about focus. The focus to connect with the mountain has to be on what we call the now moment. Okay, in an environment that's changing, a race course, off-piste, bumps, moguls, we've got to be in the now moment. Living the now. And there's loads of stuff that's been written on this. Living the now, being in the now moment. So you're in tune with what's happening to you, what's about to happen to you within the next half a second. Okay? We're also in skiing, we also have to be aware of what's going to happen in the future. If we're off piece, it's for safety. If we're skiing down a slalom course, we need to be in tune with what's going to happen in the future as well. But we also need to be in tune with the now moment. So we can spread out our focus. We can use central and peripheral focus. I could use central focus for the now moment, peripheral, peripheral focus for the future moments. Or well, I can intentionally switch. Okay, which means I come very close towards the now moment and I go further away to the future moment. Okay? Living in the past, it's gone. <laughs> Forget it. Okay? That can cause distractions. Okay? Living in the past. What has happened has happened, so just forget it. Okay? In a race course, if you've lost your balance, forget it. It's gone. If you've lost a bit of time, it's gone. Get back in with the now moment. You know, I often see some racers some racers make a mistake and it can ruin their whole run. An off-piece skier can make a mistake and it can ruin their whole run. Other racers, it spurs them on. They make a mistake and it spurs them back into getting focused on that now moment. And they go even faster. Hersher, in his heyday, made some humongous mistakes. Lost a second, a second and a half, but still went on to win the race. So he was very good at leaving the past, letting the past go and getting on with the present moment. Okay? Remember that Kung Fu Panda um, quote, the past is history, the future is a mystery, but now is a gift. That is why it is called the present. Okay? In order to connect with the mountain, you've got to be in the now, the now moment, skiing in the now. Okay? Yeah, at Snowworks, we talk a lot about this and we try to get specific drills which bring people into the now moment, which connects them with the mountain. Okay? We call them mantras. So, and often myself personally, if I'm skiing and I find my focus drift away from the connection point for one reason or another, it just moves away onto something else through a distraction or something totally irrelevant, I've got to bring it back. So we use left edge, right edge. We get the person to say left edge when they're using the left edge, right edge when they're using the right edge, or right foot, left foot, right edge, left edge. We have a very, very simple exercise, which is when you push or when you feel the inside edge of that right ski, you say right edge. When you feel the inside edge of the left ski, you say left edge. Feel the edge against the snow and say it to yourself. Okay. Left edge, right edge, left edge, right edge. In your mind, say to yourself, right edge, left edge, right edge, left edge. A lot of ski instruction will pull your focus away from your skis. And a lot of instructors like to work very much with the upper body. But if that happens on days like today, then you feel like you're floundering in the dark. Keep the focus on the contact point with the mountain. So we're bringing the focus right down to the connecting point with the mountain. Now in our association, the British Association of Snow Sports Instructors, we recognised this a long time ago. So we developed um, a model which was called the fundamental elements of skiing. The fundamental elements. And some of those fundamental elements were movements, which I spoke about in the last webinar. Movements. And some of the fundamental elements were what we called steering. Okay, so the movements were what you do with the body, steering is what you do with your skis. Okay, edge control. Edge control is what you do with the edge of the ski. Okay, so that's a connection point with the mountain. Pressure control. Pressure control is what you do with the ski. So it's another connection point with the mountain. 
rotation, control of rotation, is what you do with the ski. So it's another connection point with the mountain. So if you're a ski instructor listening into this, okay, you can split up movements and steering. So you've got lateral movements. If you're focusing on lateral movements, then your focus is away from the connection point with the mountain. But if you're focusing on edge control, your focus is on the connection point with the mountain. So bear that in mind. Lateral movements are seriously useful to develop, but if I'm skiing, I'm focused in an environment that's changing, I'm focused on edge control. Edge control, the edge of my ski, that's the connection point. Same with pressure control, okay, which links in with flexion extension movements. Okay, away from the mountain, flexion extension is a, a movement. Pressure control is what the ski is doing against the snow. Okay, so link into the stuff that connects you with the mountain. Now I did say on the intro to this that this can revolutionize your skiing and it can, it absolutely can. As long as you're aware of your focus where it is. Is it away? Am I being distracted? Am I scared about how I look? Am I nervous about my performance? Am I thinking about the results of my ski race? Or am I on the now moment? dealing with what's going to happen to me and letting the result take care, take care of itself. So if I'm a ski racer, I'm focused on the performance, dealing with the situation. Let the result take care of itself. How many times have you heard your coach say that? Let the result take care of itself. If you're focused on the result, you're one minute into the future. You're not on the now movement, so you can't be connected. If you're a skier and you're fo looking ahead, um, too far, you're not on the now moment. If you're watching your instructor, you're not on the now moment. If you're doing a particular drill or an exercise, you're not connected. They can all be useful stuff, but if you want to ski well, you have to get connected with the mountain. Do you remember that thing I spoke about before? Drills and skills and playing the game. Okay, if you're doing a drill or skill, recognize it's a drill or a skill, but then if you're going free skiing, play the game. Get connected and play the game. Now. I realized many, many years ago, thankfully, I was heading in a direction where I wasn't connected at all. And it was thanks to one person uh, that brought me back to the now moment. I got rid of my self-doubt. I got rid of being self-conscious. I didn't care what I looked like. I wanted to enjoy my skiing. So I suddenly reconnected with the mountain and my skiing just changed completely. Absolutely changed completely. I'm not saying that technique isn't useful, it is seriously useful. But don't let it draw you away from the mountain environment. Okay, it's a tool to connect with the mountain environment. Remember that technique, you don't do technique for itself, for its own sake. Technique allows us to connect with the mountain. Okay, that's what it's for, to connect with the mountain. So you've always got to come back to that connection point. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. I've been going quite a while. That's probably my longest chat so far, 45 minutes. Thank you for listening. I'm gonna put this on the video later on, so please come back and listen. Don't forget, connect with the mountain and your skiing will literally take off.